surround yourself by men of like mind and wisdom, telling you that you are destined to fulfill the call of God upon your life, to be prosperous, blessed, fruitful, that you would multiply, that you would fill the earth with influence, that you would subdue all opposition, all adversity, to grow in your patience, to grow in your capacity to love. Welcome back to What is a Man's Journey Towards Manhood. This is Pastor Joaquin G. Molina, and we're glad that you're still sticking around uh, to journey in the direction. There's a lot left. There's a lot more information and step-by-step -step progression to culminate in the full expression of the measure, the stature, and the fullness of men. Here we are in segment five, part five. We're discussing the elements of time, talents, and treasure. And we've said that a man should number, should gain wisdom to number the days he has upon the earth. It's allotted a specific time that he'll live upon the earth. Uh, you want to meditate on scriptures, verses in the Bible like Acts chapter um, 17, uh, verse 26, where it says that uh, he has made man from every nation. God has made man from every nation and he has put them upon the earth and predetermined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings. You want to figure out how much time you have, you have to ask God, teach me to number my days so that I can garner a heart of wisdom. In Acts 17, 26, God pre-appointed and predetermined the times men would spend upon the earth and the extent of their boundaries and dwellings upon the land. And so understanding our time, uh, the Bible says that man's life and existence upon the earth is a hand breadth. That means the width of a hand. And I like to say that the width of the hand is pretty much four fingers. That's the width of the hand. And it has four seasons. The first season, our childhood. When we learn a lot of things during our childhood, the second season is um, time for maturity where we enter into an adult age. And then it comes the time where we're learning how to expand our character in the investment of our time, talents, and treasures so that we can culminate life in the end of our life enjoying the rejoicing treasures that we've been able to raise up during our lifetime. And so there it is, my friend, as you are efficient and wise with your time, then you'll be able to uh, enjoy your, the efforts of developing talents uh, there's some scriptures there in the book of Proverbs that are phenomenal. It's Proverbs 12, 24. It says that the hand of the diligent shall rule. Listen here. The word diligent means doing the right thing at the right time. If you're, not do if you're doing the wrong thing at the right time, you're not being diligent. And if you're doing the wrong thing at the right time, you're not going to be praised and rewarded for diligence either. But the hand of the diligent shall rule, shall take dominion, shall overcome adversity and conflict. So being able to uh, be precise with our timing, the precision of when to speak, when not to speak, the, the time frame we have to learn so that we can go into the next phase and season of life, doing things in their seasons, in their times, will allow us to develop talents and the people will praise us for our talents. If we're doing the right thing at the right time, that's called talent. And you catch a football, and you shoot a basketball, and you uh, enter into a contract, and you do things at the right time, at the right place, with all diligence, that is developing your talent. And how you develop your talent, the Bible says that the hand of the diligent, the talented, will will rule, um, but the slothful shall be under tribute, always subservient. Uh, a man that doesn't cultivate his talents, who has lost his time, has not redeemed it. This man is a slothful, lazy, a man who has forgotten the seasons of life for his, for his development. This man truly will have no treasure. He will have loss. He will have calamity. 
he will pay tribute. He will be under. And then there's the other verse, uh, Proverbs 22, 29. The Bible says like this, See thou a man who's diligent? If you notice somebody who cares about their time, who's not losing his time, his family time, his marriage time, see a man who's precise in his diligence, in his affairs, he shall stand before kings. He's going to be prominent. He shall not stand before unknown men. He's not going to be indifferent, ordinary. And God created you to be a champion in the development of your time into a proper time of prayer, proper investment at church, a development of your spirit. Uh, if you go fishing when you're supposed to be nourishing your spirit, you're a fool. If you're supposed to be nourishing your spirit and you're absent at church, you're not diligent in nourishing your spirit. And I want to say nourishing your marriage and nourishing your children and being able to have wholesome spirits at home, governing the time, the talent, to have great treasure, to sit back and to know, and not to have the infirmity of life in Ecclesiastes 2.17, where it says, Therefore, I hated life. I hated life because I did not prepare for my elderly days. There have men who have forsaken their children during a certain season where they should have been parenting. And now their older days, they spend having to visit prisons and going to rehab centers and going to places God never intended because they missed out the diligence of their time, their talents, and the infirmity of their treasures. I love the verse in 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. It says, the sons of Issachar knew the times. They knew the seasons, and therefore they were able to raise up as leaders. They were able to raise up and lead those under their care. Now, don't miss out the opportunity to meditate seriously in this portion of seeking your manhood. What is a man? It's about where you sow your time, where you govern your spirit in regards to your talents. Uh, I love Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1. It says, to everything under the sun, there is a time for every purpose under the heaven, that you live life in seasons, that you understand that God has made everything beautiful in His time. You don't have to rush ahead. I had many friends of mine that would begin to hoard wealth and retirement accounts and savings, and they were always preparing for their uh, retirement and vacation and they perished at the young age of 50, 60 years old, and never got into a season to enjoy their family. So that's why we say in this chapter, Psalm 90, verse 12, Lord, teach us, give us the wisdom to number our days, the right allotment of time, the right allotment of the seasons, a season to enjoy my wife, a season to spend time together. So we might gain a heart of wisdom. Uh, we said that, that we should add virtue to our faith. The excellence of wisdom is virtue. That we know we're not misspending our time. We're not, not hitting the bullseye when we're throwing the dart into the bullseye. We're hitting the mark. We're being men. We're doing the right things at the right time, at the right place. We have cultivated our talents. We have spent time doing what God has deposited in us for us to do so that our treasure might increase. And then our treasure is the benefit, the fruit uh, and harvest of having done the right things at the right time, uh, developing our talents. Um, God has given each man a talent to be able to enjoy. And so you're able to walk in this in a manner that needs to be invested so that the return is great. How do you invest your time? How do you invest your talents? And that will determine the treasures. And the wealth of your treasure will be enjoyed by your family, by yourself, by your descendants. The Bible says to the third and fourth generations of those men who obey my word and keep my commandments. God is a precise time, uh, God of timing. He, his precision is 
is right down to the very second of the development of his days. So learning how to put in the investment of time, talents, and treasure will garner you to be a man of excellence, a man, uh, the Bible says, of renown, a man that will be acknowledged in your sphere of influence with a place where you work. You get to work on time. You're, you're able to not, not get home, not on time. You don't spend your time at home somewhere else. You, you're a methodical man. You're a precise man. You're a specific man. You're a man that is able to, to capture the heart of your children. Uh, people could see that you're reliable, that you're consistent, that you're stable. You're not all over the place. You're not, you're not immature. You're not misspending your time. You're not, you're not living life fast and furious to come to a calamity and an end that is unfavorable to your family. So in this regard, we say that a man is he who's able to understand his body, soul, and spirit, walking with his thoughts, words, and actions, directed in the focus of his time upon the earth, his talents that God has given him, and his treasure. For God has given every man a talent to be able to garner great treasure upon the earth. And so we're seeing that in these times, foolish men do not keep track of time. They don't understand uh, the intensity of their days upon the earth. We don't have much time. Uh, in the development of your childhood, that passes. You're not supposed to perpetuate your childhood um, into the days of maturity. You have to put them behind you. When I was a child, I acted like a child. I spoke like a child, but I put that away, Paul says. We're going to see that coming up. And then all of a sudden he says, but when I became a man, I put away my childishness. I put away my immaturity. I'm not uh, fishing when I'm supposed to be working. I'm not working when I'm supposed to be fishing. I'm a man of excellence. I'm a man of character. I've determined that I will deposit my time my talents and my treasure in the direction they should go. And being able to discern this, being able to, to really come to the place where you know that you know that you know that you're not dropping the ball, but that your time are well invested, guess what? They're gonna have a great return, that your talents are developed and put into place. The reality of that, you're gonna have a great return. And the, the truth of the matter is, it says that the investment of your treasure is phenomenal because you will have the influence over your sphere of responsibility, your family, your city, your neighbors, your church, the nations of the earth. And this is what God is doing with real men that know how to govern their time, their talents, and their treasures. So it's during this time that we come to the place where we acknowledge that our time is of essence and our talents will be developed by our time and it will culminate in our treasure. And we'll touch upon this in our next part of this segment. God bless you. Dad, where are you? Me and Mom are waiting for you. We need you home with us. Was it my fault? What did I do wrong? I need you. I need you to teach me. How am I supposed to grow up to be a man? We live in a fatherless generation where children are looking for examples, they're looking for uh, answers to the questions they have. They're being curious to know how to confront life, how to think, how to speak, how to act. We want men to be able to know what a man is, and we say that a man is a champion. 
God created man in his image and his likeness, and he wants every man to walk in the integrity and the wholesome purity of the character of God. In this book, What is a Man? We challenge every man to begin to deny self because the center of a child's universe is his self. And denying yourself is the expression of love. So we teach men to walk in love towards everyone at all times in all places. Welcome back to Searching for the Journey of Manhood. This book, What is a Man, is really allowing men all over the world to come to understand the essence of what it is to be a man. See, we're here upon the earth, and men are having so many expressions in so many directions. Uh, I recall being young and having uh, family friends come over and say, let's go take you to be a man. And you're 12, 13, 14, 15 years old, and you're being invited to be initiated in the fraternity of manhood, the gathering of men, and those invitations are very, very awkward. Uh, I didn't know if we were going to go throw rocks at bottles on the street. I didn't know if we were going to climb trees. I didn't know if we were going to go hunting. I didn't know what it was to be a man. When you go hunting and capture an animal, uh, when you shoot a uh, game, when uh, you go to a bar and have your beer for the first time, is that is what becoming a man uh, is figuratively the essence of what a man is? Or is understanding what a man is, that God made man in his image and likeness, that God created man to bless him, to make him fruitful and multiply and to fill the earth and subdue it and take dominion, to follow the model of Christ. Like we've said, Jesus is the true model of manhood. To be able to understand that the captured essence of manhood is within the physical body as expressed through a healthy soul that is found in a nourished spirit that is wholesome. And then we found out that our thoughts, our words, and our actions govern what our expressions of character are and what is it that moves our thoughts? What is it that moves our uh, words? What is it that moves our actions? Why are we motivated to do these things? Well, I want to tell you that manhood also includes this fifth segment and where you're going to find that our time, our treasure, and our talents are vested in the expressions. Now that we know that we have a body, soul, and a spirit, now our thoughts, our words, and our actions are displayed in these matters of time, talents, and treasure. And the Bible says for purposes of time, this abstract entity, Psalm 90 verse 12 says, Lord, teach us. Let us learn how to number our days. The measure of a man's life upon the earth, the measure of his life, is determined by the days he lives. So if we ask God to teach us that we're willing to learn how to number, how to measure our time upon the earth, we're not living fast and we're not living slothfully. We're not living slow. But teach us to number our days so that we can garner or gain a heart of wisdom. That's Psalm 90 verse 12. If you understand that, that God wants you to know that there's a time for everything upon the earth. There's a time to be able to uh, walk in a manner which is advantageous. That when a man is coming when he should be going and going when he should be coming and he's out of sync with time, that leads to anxiety, depression, that leads to liability, to loss. Ecclesiastes 2.17 says, because I did not know the seasons of the time I lived in, I hated life. I hated the work that I did under the sun because it was burdensome to me and it vexed my spirit. Vanity. They're doing things superficially and out of place. The not knowing how to govern your time. The not knowing how to come in and go out will lead you to a disgusting existence as a man upon the earth. So therefore, he learned. It was there that he learned um, that there was a time and a season for everything. A lot of people are all over the place, all over the time, and they trample 
thinking that it's more important to garner wealth. A lot of my friends decided that they would make life about the gathering, the abundance of the things possessed. What does that mean? That many men don't understand that they're going to pass away and they're garnering and hoarding wealth for a time they're not going to be here. For a time, uh, gentlemen who have spent lifetimes in uh, running television stations and then finding out at a certain time when they're going to retire, they only lived one more week and they lost the opportunity to experience life because they've spent too much time at work and too little time with the family. The Bible says in Luke 12, 15, when Jesus says, take heed, beware of your desire of things because a man's life does not consist. Life of a man is not consisting on the abundance of the things he possesses. So there's a philosophy in uh, modern times is get all you can and can all you get. But the truth of the matter is that we should allot a season and a time for each portion of our life upon the earth and ask God, ask God to give you wisdom as a man. Ask God to teach you how to uh, move in such a direction uh, that you're able to live life in a true profit. The Gospel of Mark chapter 8 verse 36 says, What will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses the enjoyment of it? What will it profit us if we're super successful? There are men that are third, fourth, fifth richest men upon the nation and they cannot enjoy their marriage. Uh, they cannot enjoy their family. One of these men is Elvis Presley. Uh, the king of rock and roll, he lived so fast and so furious, he died in his 40s, was unable to enjoy his daughter, his grandchildren, his marriage. He lived outside of seasons and time and was vexed in his spirit because he didn't know how to govern the importance of time, talents, and treasures. You understand what profits a man is his ability to treasure in the right place. The Bible says in Matthew 6, in verses 19 through 21, that do not lay up for yourself treasures here upon the earth. The treasures of men are not to be laid upon the earth where they're destroyed, where they rot, where they perish and thieves break in and steal. No, lay up for yourself treasures that are in heaven, peace, joy, family, relationships. Uh, you know, my greatest treasure here upon the earth is my relationship with my three sons and my daughter. My relationship with my wife as we journey through life together, not hoarding wealth, not trying to garner riches, but to try to find the purpose and live out uh, God's desire for my life so that I have not suffered any loss in the time God has given me. So the Bible says in Matthew 6, that our concentration are seeking the things above. Seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first understanding life within the reference of righteousness and all things shall be added. All your heart's desire. But men that don't have a governing spirit, that don't sp uh, govern their spirit, that don't have wisdom, they say that these men, they glory in their own wisdom. They follow their own ways. Jeremiah 9, 23 says like this. It says, Thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Jeremiah 9, 23. Don't glory in your intellect, in your academia, in your degrees, in that you have learned intelligence. Nor let the mighty man glory in his might. Don't, don't say, I'm powerful and I'm going to rejoice in the fact that I'm strong. Nor let him glory, the rich man, glory in his riches. Don't let him glory in his riches. But that he might understand that those who know God, that those who walk in loving kindness, that those who have the judgments of God and are able to determine the times of God to live in a manner that pleases God, they will delight, they will be delighted as they exercise these uh, godly attributes upon the earth. And so then we see that our true riches are not based on possessions of things, but in the wisdom of the time spent at highest level. We have already mentioned Ecclesiastes 6.6 6, where it says, What value is it to a man that he were to live a thousand years twice 
if he does not taste good, if he does not live out his purpose. This man, it would have been better, it says in that chapter of Ecclesiastes 6, that he would have never been born. And so that's why it's important. The preacher says in Ecclesiastes 3, verses 1 to verse 3, it says that he learned there's a time and a season for everything under heaven. There's a time and a season. And we need to be men to learn the time and seasons. A lot of men are having intimacy before they get married. That's out of time. It brings a lot of destruction. A lot of men bring in children into the world without it being the time. They're not ti it's not time for them to be parents. They're having intimacy without being married, without having a serious covenant and relationship, and they bring the devastation of great loss upon the earth by forming unstable families, divided, destroyed families. These are men that have not accomplished uh, the full measure and stature of right men living at the right time, at the right place, with the right people. And I, I want to tell you that each day God has made, it says in Psalm 118, verse 24, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. As is David, was living the times of God in the measures of God and was to be able to accomplish his manhood, a man after God's own heart. And that's what we become as we journey in this life to become men. The challenge is, am I doing the right thing at the right time? Am I being diligent? Am I asking God for wisdom to number my days? The times I'm supposed to study, I'm studying. The times I'm supposed to form a family, I form a family. The times I'm supposed to support and, and garner the needs of my household, I'm not spendthrift. I'm not just going in every direction, um, living life as a child in my midlife crisis as I was when I was in the adolescent time. And when I was in my uh, perpetuating my adolescence, I'm 50 years old and I'm still acting like a 20 year old. I'm 60 years old and I want to be single and I want to be a bachelor. These are men that have lost and are disconnected and distant. They are far from their manhood. And so it's time to give up our toys. We already had toys. Uh, toys are when you're a child. Now it's time to forsake our youth. And when I was a child, I, I thought like a child. But now that I become a man, I'm going to think in my time, in my talents, and in my true treasures so that I could become the wholesome man that my wife needs, that my children are looking for, that the church needs strong men in tough times. And I want to encourage you to this. I want you to understand that the essence of time is not to be left to someone else, live life fast, furious, and forget about my uh, responsibilities. No, my friend, today is the day where your time, talents, and treasures are directed into the purpose of your manhood as a faithful husband, a great father, and an amazing world changer. God bless you. See you in the next segment in part six.